Del Rio, Texas. Rob Wade. And Robert Garza. This episode of Two Guys Who Dive, recorded live Saturday, 30 March, 2013, episode 61, Happy Easter! Welcome once together again to another exciting, fun-filled episode of Two Guys Who Dive, and I'm your host, Rob Wade, and I have... Uh, have in the studio special guest Troy McGonagall. That's right. That's right. Uh, for those of you who were here with us last week or were watching on YouTube, uh, you know probably that Scuba Bob, aka Robert Garza, aka Bobby Flamingo, <laughs> is <laughs> he wow. is. Uh, yeah, I know. That's he's, a lot of aka he, he, going he, there. I know he's going to be all initials before it's all over. <laughs> with. Yeah. So he um, he's going through confirmation. He is a uh, he is a now a practicing Catholic, and he's going through, uh, he'll be uh, doing his first communion this, this weekend. Uh, awesome. So Long it's going to be cool. So he's getting, doing all the preparations for right. that. Fun on Easter, stuff. no less. Yeah, no kidding. If you're going to do your first communion, Exciting. That's, that's the way to do it. Uh, so congratulations to him. I know he's going to be all nervous and everything yeah. to go through all that. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, glad to have you in the studio this glad week. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's glad to be anywhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up this morning and that was a good thing. Yes. I so, was breathing. Yeah. Breathing's good. <laughs> so, how was your week? Good. Productive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in process of making, you know, changes personally. Ch -ch -ch changes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good, though. <coughs> right, um, right. Kind of ex uh, ex I guess a type of expansion right, of the right. tent. Oh, and, there we go. Um, Unfurl. Yeah. And um, got some, got a lot accomplished in, in the arena of uh, uh, proliferating my uh, resume and whatnot oh, yeah, in, the yeah. area, in the areas of interest and where I'm looking. Cool. And cool. Uh, excited about that, waiting for some response. Actually, I've already received some. Um, Additional interest, uh, nice concerning nice. the profile. I made some, di some changes to my profile in some different places. Right. So I'm getting some emails. <coughs> so I need to. That's good. I'm going to be responding That's to those good. Monday. Especially, uh, you know, given the market the way it is right now, you know, to have businesses interested in you. Yes. Especially, you know, it's interesting. I was, uh, uh, I know, at least up in the Northeast, there seems to be an issue with. Some companies are only accepting applications from people who are already employed. And there's, <laughs> of course, some, there's some um, legislation afoot in those areas that are striving to make, uh, I, I guess what they're calling it, job discrimination illegal. Mm. In other words, you can't, dis you can't discriminate against somebody who's applying for a position if they're coming to you as an unemployed person. And yeah. that and that makes sense to me, uh, although it's sad that we have to go to that route. And I don't, I honestly don't understand the mentality of a company that that will restrict their potential em employee pool to those who are all, basically they just want to rob Peter to pay Paul. They want to steal from another company rather than say, you know what, I got somebody here who has got otherwise a a stellar resume and interviews well. This person is gonna is hungry to be on my team, as opposed to somebody you're trying to lure maybe mm -hmm. from another company. So right. no, I don't understand that mentality. Well, that actually <coughs> could be detrimental if you're actually. I would think so. Because, I mean, because there could be many potential employees uh, with, among applicants that are not necessarily employed that would be beneficial to your company. Right. Right. I think that would, doesn't make sense to me. No, uh, but this is a weird world, wor weird world that we live in right now. All sorts of things that that didn't used to be are, and things that are you didn't used to be. And well, logic, reason, d 
typically are. are <laughs> those, <laughs> those funny words that most people. Observation. You're you're starting <laughs> to slide out of camera view here. You. Oh, <laughs> am I? Yes. There. <laughs> here we go. Oh no, we're rolling. <laughs> it's out of control. We're like little ping pong, okay. little pinballs. I'll stay. Yeah, see, yeah, I need yeah. to go this way. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm good. Cameras are fun. Now, yeah. if we actually, if we could afford paying a camera crew, they could be like <laughs> following us. It'd be cool. They do the little, little live zoom, get up your nose, that kind of stuff. You know, it'd be fun. But, <laughs> but we can't. We don't. So, this is what we got. Static cameras. Good. <clears throat> so, uh, so again, ca congratulations to Scuba Bob on his. His uh, confirmation and first communion. That's awesome. And so we have Easter coming up a mere less than 24 hours away. I'm, I'm excited. We're going to have, uh, I'm sure, a great service tomorrow. It'll be the third service that we will be uh, streaming from Grace Community yes. Church. Oh, good. I was hoping you were going to mention that. Yeah. Uh, it's still a work in progress. You know, this software is good. I'm trying to do it off of a laptop. Proof of concept <laughs> is but the fact is, this silly thing is just, uh, it's, you know, if, if my desktop is tremendously underpowered to do this, then absolutely, my poor, l if my desktop can't handle it, my laptop is choking on it. As a matter of fact, it can't send the full, uh, the full HD at even more than 20 frames per second. So, which, you know, there's not, it's not like there's a lot of motion going mm -hmm. on in our service, you know. The pastor is moving a little bit, and then we're pretty static up yep. there on the platform for praise and worship. R but really, the big challenge that that uh, that I have right now, and I, I'm, I think I want to, after we're done with the podcast, I think I may want to pop over to the church and kind of do some more testing, configuring, is um, the audio. You know, the little microphone port on these laptops are not designed for high-end yeah uh dynamic volumes they're designed for a little microphone like a headset mm -hmm. microphone something like that so obviously what i need to do is toy around with a few different things to see if i can get at least a decent decent sound level going in where it's not like blaring because mm -hmm. that was a problem i noticed with the uh, with last week i it's did just, notice yeah. that uh now once it got to just the pastor uh, right it was fine because you know, her dynamic level is not that this, much yeah and this this the speech part of it was fine. Yeah. It was just yeah. the over. The music, it's just you can tell that the the built-in hardware wants to try to attenuate, and it can't, and mm -hmm. so it just gets overdriven. Or it's almost like it's got its own uh, gate, so it's like it has yeah. to be ab above a certain, certain volume. It's like, <laughs> 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 you know, it's like not good. So uh, I'll be trying, playing with some tweaks on that to, uh, maybe tonight, because I would like to get tomorrow's service a, a good... Audio yeah. portion, uh, so we'll see, we'll see, but that's gonna. I'm excited. I always like Easter. Uh, well, I like every Sunday, but you know, Easter is definitely special for us yeah, Christians. Well, you know, and there's <laughs> that's a why we're Christians. <laughs> I think it creates a <coughs> little different atmosphere, even for those who are uh, regularly yeah. attending church. But then we also have you know folks that that come and right uh, and and creates a little. Uh, a nice atmosphere, a positive, right? Not n not that it's not positive otherwise, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I agree. I, I do absolutely, enjoy it. absolutely. So, um, well, uh, Troy and I actually the the clan McGonagill and the, the clan Wade, <laughs> although if you can count two as a clan, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> were uh, we were um, doing the morning thing, uh, got up. Earlier than I normally do to do go out to do anything, mm -hmm. uh, did the IHOP thing. That was fun. We had a great time. And uh, hit some stores, AT&T and Cato and places like that. <coughs> and then, but I was like, okay, my big ticket item that I was going to be working on today was to replace a part on a Mustang. I have, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I have a 2002 uh, Mustang GT. Which looks smashing, by yeah, the if, way. If, but it does need a little bit of a paint yeah, job. Well, the back deck clear is... Clear coat's yeah, coming yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. You know, otherwise. Otherwise, it's in good, it's, it yeah. does well. But I have an issue with the... Uh, when it's idling, it will do this weird, uh, like, humming vibration sound. And I've come to discover over the past day and a half, they call, there's a term that's commonly referred to for this called moosing. 
moosing? Yes. As in the animal? As moose, in the animal. Moosing. Evidently, people have equated the sound that this makes like mooses. <laughs> or is it... <laughs> or is it Mises? Mises. That would be plural mouse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, when I'm at idle, until unless I push the gas, or unless I have something that puts a higher load on it, um, like AC, uh, it does this really, really annoying sound. And so I hate sitting like at the gate, at the base, or at a stoplight, and all you hear is... Bah! I have to keep gunning the engine to kind of make it stop or throw the AC on or something like that. Really annoying. Well, I, w I went into, uh, of course, we're at the end of the month. I went to one of the local oil change slash inspection places to get my state inspection, inspection sti sticker uh, updated. And he drives around. He comes, pulls it back in, gets one of his other guys there, pops the hood, and he goes, yep. That's it right there. And he points to the, um, uh, what do they call it? Idle air controller valve. And I'm like, what is that? He said, well, he says, I have a uh, similar model and this is a common problem. So evidently it gets old or dirty and it's not letting air through at the proper rate. So it creates a, a, a harmonic that vibrates down through the uh, the air intake tube mm -hmm. from the filter. <coughs> and yeah, it was annoying. He said, yeah, you need to replace that or clean it. Well, I have 134,000 miles on the car, so it's probably due for a replacement. So after we went separate ways, I popped over to AutoZone and got the only one that they had left. Oh. So I come home. It's an easy thing to replace. It's right there. It's attached to the intake manifold because it's obviously a fuel-injected engine. So I take the two screws off. Well, I disconnect the battery, take the two screws off, take the hose that flow feeds a bypass air. And I'm like, I am not a car mechanic. And so if I'm not, I'm definitely talking over the heads of most of our folks here. Mm -hmm. But um, take the hose off, take the, the actual sensor because you don't want to change sensors when you still have power to the uh, to the computer. You want you you, you want it to reset. It's kind of like a reboot. So mm. I uh, removed all that. Easily took the old one off, and yeah, it looked all gummy inside. Blah blah blah. Stuck the brand new one on there. Connected everything. Connected the battery. Started it up, and it was way worse. Oh, way worse. If it was a moose before, it was two mooses having sex <laughs> afterward. It was horrible. <laughs> I was like, what in the world? And I had read a number of places, you know, I was checking up how to do this correctly. They said it will take a little bit for the idle to, to settle down because the computer is learning the, how the new sensor is working, etc. And it's making adjustments on the go. Well, you know, and they say, well, you may have to rev this above 3K a few times to kind of force it to mm -hmm. do the high end. But it would just go, it would rev up really high when I start and then settle down and then go up and down, up and down, up and down. And then it finally die. Yeah. Then it finally die. Making the screaming noises the whole time. Wow. So I fiddled with this. A number of different, uh, you know, adjustments. I tried checking the, the way that the gasket was on it and everything. I did this for, I think, a couple hours, and I got finally got fed up. And luckily, this the one I bought had a lifetime warranty, so I took it back to to them. They didn't have any others, so they're like, "Well, do you want your money back?" I'm like, "Well, yeah." <coughs> and I had read a couple of places that people had run into where they got a brand new one and it was just faulty out of the box, and it made the problem worse. I thought, "All right, do I want to take a chance here?" And Try uh, go to like O'Reilly's or or uh, advanced advanced or NAP or, or whatever, and try a different brand because it was an eighty-three dollar part. Oh, yeah, with tax. I'm like, mm, do I want to do that? So I went to O'Reilly and they didn't have any. <coughs> I think that must have been a God thing because I wasn't really anxious and the price was about the same. So. I thought, well, what if I get some carb cleaner 
and just try to clean the old one. Because when I put the old one back on, a little by, back up just a bit. When I drove to AutoZone to return the part, I still had the new one in. I thought, well, maybe actually driving it would help it. No, as a matter of fact, partway there, it started missing really bad. My engine, check engine light was flashing at me. And luckily, I have one of those computers. So I plugged it in, and it said, you know, I, it gave me like four different error codes that, that the, uh, the, the, fuel was too, the fuel mixture was too lean on cylinder one, cylinder one was missing, cylinder one had misfires. I mean, it only gets like four different codes basically telling me you need to get this cylinder fixed, the compression or whatever, because your car's going to blow up. I'm like, what? Just from changing the stupid idle or air, yeah. idle air controller. So I pulled the new one right there in the parking lot. I pulled the new one, put the old one back on, and it settled down. I mean, it still was making the noise, but not nearly at the level that the new one was, and it was idling and, and all this, the... And this was at AutoZone? In yeah, the in, in, in the, the parking, parking lot. Okay. So I'm like, good grief. So I took it in. I said, here's the deal. Just bought it. It's making the problem worse. Well, we don't have any other ones. Do you want your money back? Okay, yes. Okay, so fast forward, I go over to O'Reilly's. So I go I go in there and I explain the issue and I like, well, we don't have any. So I thought, okay, well what's what's the best carb cleaner you got? So he gave me some B12. There you go. <coughs> so I brought that home, drove home, popped the hood, popped the, off the old one, and then just flooded the darn thing with B12, let it air, plugged it back in. Clean, quiet, Back to normal. I was like, yes. Wow. Yeah. 84 bucks saved, 83, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love B12. Yeah. That it's stuff's good awesome, stuff. man. It is good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, I had to make sure I don't get it on my clothes because, like, all of a sudden I'm naked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you get it on your hands and yeah. leave it there, it, it, it kind yeah. of burns a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, too. absolutely. So that, wow. was, that was my exciting little endeavor with the car. So, uh, treated myself to go getting it cleaned to the, the new car wash up the <laughs> I street. Th I thought it looked pretty <laughs> s yeah. shiny when I pulled yeah. it. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's been a couple of weeks, a couple of episodes since we've had any kind of movie, movie reviews, and we, uh, we went to go see uh, G.I. Joe Retaliation. So, your thoughts? I was thinking about it earlier, because I, I had a feeling you were going to want to talk about <laughs> it. So... <clears throat> I'm not a fan of um, the guy that, the character that died. The right, actor. me neither. What's his name? Who cares? <laughs> I can probably Tatum. look it up over here. Channing Tatum. Is he related to? I don't think so. Okay. No, last name's Tatum. <coughs> uh, Channing Tatum. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't like his style. I don't, I, just, you know, yeah. I don't think he's that great of an actor. I, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I know all the ladies, you know, have a thing for him, but anyway. I do like the addition of Dwayne Johnson. Yes. He's just cool. Yes, he is. And Bruce Willis, I'm a fan. Yeah. And although his part was, you know, minor, mm -hmm. uh, it added a little, a little extra to it. I, I, I think it's interesting in G.I. Joe there, you know, it's, it's obviously – for entertainment. Oh, value. yeah. I mean, you can't... Totally suspending disbelief. Yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't as ascribe reality any reality to, to it. So, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're okay with watching a movie and, and getting past the reality component, right. then it's cool. For me, that's what I'm going to movies about. I mean, there right. are some movies I do enjoy where I know it's a true story. And yeah. yeah, okay, I'm good with yeah. that. But this overall, um, I, I liked it. I, I, I liked the storyline. I liked how they did it. Had a little more seriousness. It kind of reminds me when I watch the GI Joe movies. It kind of reminded me of watching the cartoon when I was a kid. Yeah. Because you'd see five million rounds going, and nobody ever died. Right. Nobody ever fell down. Yeah. There was nobody. There was nobody ever, you know, deceased. Right. In this one, there's some people that actually, yeah. you know, were taken out. So my overall thoughts were, I like Dwayne. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that they got more of the bad guys in there this time. Yeah. I mean, you actually had more presence, and mm -hmm. that that kind of sealed it for me. And, and I'm still working off my watching it as a kid, the cartoon. Yep. So it, it kind of brought it together, and it, it's 
very similar to that. So, I, yeah, I liked it. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, <coughs> I, I enjoyed it. I have to say I did, I did too. Um, I kind of had low expectations, even given the Dwayne Johnson and Bruce Willis factor. I kind of had low expectations uh, because there were a number of elements about the first movie that I was kind of disappointed with. Um, mostly because of the two main characters. Uh, if there was if there was one thing that I was disappointed most with in this one, it has to be while there was no like nudity or uh, no real language uh, to speak of, there was gratuitous sexist. Uh, or chauvinistic, I guess. Oh, no, they were definitely playing to the male factor <laughs> on this. I'm like, okay. Uh, I forget the name of the actress who was playing Lady J. But yeah. Um, she, she's a very attractive uh, young woman, but come on. Did they have to make it just so in-your-face obvious, all the play? I was like, come on, is that necessary? Just get, stick with the storyline. Mm -hmm. Just keep, get with the action. Don't play to that because, quite frankly, there are younger people who are coming to see this. Right. And just to play to that lowest common denominator, that's just so cheap. They could have they could have risen above that. They didn't they didn't do that in the first movie. There was none of that in the first movie, so no. I was really disappointed that they went there with this one. And there was clever photography shooting a reflection shot in chrome or whatever. Yeah, the seeing television screen. Yeah, see, oh yeah, that's what it was. Reflection. Seeing seeing her, you know, practically naked yeah. at one point. I was like, come on. Yeah. But the rest of it was was very, uh, you know, had definitely the homage to uh, the original. And it was kind of neat to actually see uh, Co uh, Cobra Commander yeah, in an outfit that yeah. actually looked more like the from the yes. the original cartoon. Right. Yeah, then uh, that's why I liked about it. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's it. There were definitely uh, good, good bits there. What? Go ahead. What? Go ahead. There's the there's the, there's the scene where they're in the president's there, and they have all the other. Mm -hmm. Not giving away too much for those of you who haven't seen it. What was the movie with Peter Sellers, where they're in the war room? You know, what I'm talking about was it George C. Scott <sighs> in that movie? It was a comedy. Yes. Dark comedy, but you know what I'm talking about. Now you're going to make me look it up. I was thinking about that. I was like, this is kind of kind of like that. This is what it reminded me of. They're all Peter around Peter Sellers? It. Yeah, it was Peter Sellers, and I think George C. Scott was in it. Um, <clears throat> Let's take a look, shall we? Let's take a look. <laughs> At his large uh, his laundry list of... Movies that he was in. It's like I quit squinting, put my glasses on here. Yeah, I'm like, I gotta put my old man glasses on. <laughs> about not, about not, what year would you say? It wasn't, wait, go back up. Wasn't the Doctor Strange love? No, that wasn't it, was it? No. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I never actually watched the whole movie. Maybe it was. Cause they're talking about the bomb and everything. No, I think it was Doctor Strange Love. It was? Right. I think. You probably were right. See it right there. Where? Scroll up scroll the screen down. Or I should say up. See right there, Doctor Strange Love. Is that it? Is that Doctor How I learned how I learned to stop worrying him and love the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> And I may be mistaken yeah. about yeah, that. George C. Scott. Yeah, okay, that's it. That's the yeah. one where they're in the war room or whatever yep. it's called. I don't know. It just reminded me of that. We'll put that on the screen for people who are who might be actually trying to follow what we're talking about. Yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. IMDb is our friend. I do love this software. I mean, it's got its issues as it grows, you know, maturity, but it is pretty cool that you can do this stuff. Yeah. Yep, George C. Scott, General Buck Jurgensen. What a name. I'm Terry Goodson. <laughs> and now that we're talking about movies, yes. we did the year end right. that didn't make it to air, right? Right, right. Um, well, it made it to air. It just didn't make it to recording. 
Oh, it was it was it was streaming. It was but streaming, it but it never got the, it the was recording. Ar- died at the very it end. It wasn't archived. Right. Okay. Well, I had I, I don't know if you made a list, but I made I, I mean I have my list, uh, and I'm checking them off as I go. The ones that I had on my list to. We got a number of good ones coming up. Yep. That were on our Next list. one I've got is uh, Oblivion. Yep. Iron Man three. Uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. Yep. After Earth. Yep. So I'm looking forward to those. The host started playing, and I was thinking that that was on my list too. But I was trying to remember. There was one that was supposed to be where this thing, this entity, was slowly taking over people. It was kind of like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, but without actually having the body snatchers. Is that what I'm thinking that's what the host is about. Uh, Oh, there go the dolls. Yeah, so I'm not a uh, Tom Cruise fan at all, but I, uh, but this movie just looks really exciting. Yeah, not necessarily because he's in it. I'm going to go see it, but right, it does look the host. Let's see. You know what's funny is when they do these movies that are in the not too distant future, how far off some of them are. You know, they're only. 15, 20 years in the future yeah. or 50 years in the future, and you're like, okay, things have got to be radically different at that point. Right. But, uh, <coughs> you know, looking at movies now that came out, you know, in the 90s and what they expected we'd be doing right about now, and I'm like, uh, nope, not even close. You not know, even close. You know, one thing I didn't, didn't notice, and I kind of waited at the end of G.I. Joe., yeah, was 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 an, an obvious setup. I didn't see that. Did you? No, there wasn't. Uh, yeah, I mean they they just kind of ended. It. Okay, the Joes are back in business, yeah. and that's it. You know. Yeah, there was no obvious. I mean the re- well, let's let's back up a little bit. The fact that Cobra Commander yeah. escaped, right? Yeah, and uh, it, it, that pretty much sets you up. You yeah. could do whatever you want. He could, you know, it's. Uh, revenge of Cobra Commander or whatever yeah. <laughs> you know you could do it and the uh, the the white ninja guy yeah he's he's something like something storm whatever he's that. flexible yeah he's he's like sitting on the fence yes he could go either way yeah <laughs> it's like I'm not f- I'm not with you but I'm not against you yeah. for the moment yeah yes. <laughs> I am not your friend but I'm not your enemy but I could be either tomorrow if you don't give me chocolate you know <laughs> something you know. <laughs> So, yeah, I liked it. I actually liked it better than the, the, than the first one. I would have liked that they had the actress from the first one in this one rather than the one that they exploited yeah. in, this <laughs> in this one. I, I just thought she was uh, more fun as an actress. I think it's interesting that they have these, without sounding sexist or anything, but she's, they have this... Well, even the guys, for that matter. I mean, they're like these incredibly chiseled, perfect oh, yeah. people. You know? Oh, yeah. Which and have you seen our military? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some are in great shape. Some not so much. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, they, and which is why we have the, the physical standards that they of are course, always. They are an elite team. Yeah, so, so you know. you'd think they would be. But, you know, that unfortunately, all of that does help perpetuate the the myth that dr- seems to drive so many kids to uh, do things like um, uh, bulimia and mm-hmm. anorexia and things yeah. like that to compensate, which is a shame. I mean, it's not necessary. Uh, let's see. Uh, Windows 8 rolled out some pretty significant updates to the, uh, the platform, uh, including some badly needed changes to mail the mail app uh, people app got some pr- improvements calendar got some improvements uh, messaging messaging got some improvements and of course the music app and the video app got and there's other ones that got updated as well news etc but the big thing from the two big ones for me were mail and calendar there's still a way to go but they do there are some nice improvements that don't look so gaudy and the ad I found that uh, mm. I found that with the um, the mail app on Windows 8, I would use it because I pull in a couple of different accounts. We were talking about this mm. p- just off the off the podcast. Uh, I pull in a couple of different accounts 
and I'm able to access those fine, but there's not a lot of mass stuff, or there wasn't a lot of mass stuff that you could do uh, in, the, in that, and so I would typically, if I really wanted to manipulate my emails, uh, I would go to the, I would bring up the Metro IE and go right to Outlook.com, Outlook, yeah. and still, that is the most featureful, mm -hmm. um, but uh, thankfully, they did add some improvements to the mail app, so I find that I'm shifting over to the Metro side more. One thing I don't <laughs> like about it is you can't control the preview pane. I don't like that. On? On the mail. Oh, you know, I've not really messed with that at all. I, I don't see that there is a control. Oh. And I don't like the fact that when I click on, on there that it's automatically showing me my email. Oh, okay. I see you what you're what saying. I, mean? oh. I, I don't want it to be there. I'd rather it not be there. I mean, in see? I don't Let me bring that up. Yeah, there's not. And I haven't found a setting to. Yeah. That is interesting. I haven't looked. But they did add a number. You see the number, yeah, a number I of that. capabilities down here. You can mark stuff junk. You can do the flagging, which is nice. You can print directly from there instead of l bringing up the, the mail that you're looking at and then going over to the charm Just bar right. and then going to devices. Mm -hmm. um, evidently, they're going to be doing a lot of that, adding it into the, to the bottom bar. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, I was looking at, which kind of rolls us into uh, the next piece, which is Windows Blue uh, got at least one of the alpha versions got leaked. And mm -hmm. the video, if you go to winbeta.org, I think that's it. Um, let me see if I can go there. Winbeta. Winbeta.org, yeah. Dun, dun. Let's switch back to our screen region. So yeah, they've uh, they'll script the Surface 2.0. Yeah, I believe that. Let's see. Uh, what's you can sync. Go ahead. What's with the post that Therat's been doing about the Google Reader? He's a fan of Google Reader. What uh, is? I don't even know what Google <coughs> Reader is. Okay. Um, RSS, yeah. a relay type of way of reading news feeds mm -hmm. where you can say, okay, and, and that's still used quite a bit, but not as much by those of us who are really wrapping in newer aspects of information sharing. But RSS was an early uh, <coughs> process mm -hmm. for you to subscribe to news feeds from different right. places. And if you go to any website that, that supports that, mm -hmm. Fox News or whatever, you'll see a little tag RSS. for the RSS. Yeah. And so you can actually roll, actually Outlook, the, the application allows you to pull all those in. You can manage your RSS feeds from within that. And Windows 7, Windows 8, well, Windows 7 mostly is where people use this, the, 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 the gadgets on the side, you could actually throw the RSS feed and it would roll all those in and you could actually watch it kind of mm -hmm. ticker tape. <coughs> well, so he and a lot of people rely on, they felt feel that Google Reader is the best RSS aggregator. So all the different RSS feeds that you subscribe to for your news, um, it aggregates those well. Okay. Uh, I personally just have found no use for RSS. Yeah. I either go to the websites, I have the websites that I pull up, or I don't. And, or I get a lot of stuff from Twitter. And if it, because most of the people I follow, they have hooks into the news. And so I will just go to the links that they post yeah. and see if it's anything worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, the, the news app that comes in Windows 8, it, it, Windows 8 is pretty decent. So, um, yeah, if yours is too loud, you can actually adjust yours individually. Okay. Your Am I adjusting yours too loud? Yeah, that's head? everybody. Oh, sorry. So I have this neat little splitter for, uh, for all of them, so just follow yours to that. You can adjust that dial. Which one am I? <coughs> oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a dial on that side for Duh. it. Uh, so anyway, um, so he's jumping on that bandwagon because, you know, he liked the Google Reader. But now I guess Feedly is the popular one standing in now that, that Google is dropping their reader. But uh, let's see if I can find... Bum, bum, bum. 
Bing, scale, rumor. Go to the next page. Yeah, I I just didn't know what, exactly what he was referring to. Because he was, he, I'm not sure if he was being sarcastic with some of his stuff. Because he was saying, oh, look here, two, something from 2010. <coughs> yeah, he tends to yeah. wax uh, a little bit sarcastic. Something about Silverlight 2010. Oh, that must, that'll be interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this is further back than I thought. Da, da, da. Oh, I, the, some of this I haven't even caught on. This Win Beto site is great for finding out some neat stuff about what's going on. Uh, oh, it's going to add the ability to automatically update your apps. So, in other words, right now with Windows 8, if you are, um, if you are, uh, if you have apps installed and there are updates the store live tile will mm -hmm. increment the number of apps and then you go to the store and you'll see an almost <coughs> easily missed uh link at the upper right corner of the screen i think that should be much bigger mm -hmm. but you, f they'll say number of updates and you click on that and it will list all the apps mm -hmm. that you have updated and then you can install all or install selected ones whatever <coughs> and the question was asked by many of us why isn't that automatic or why isn't there a setting for you to choose to automatically install all updates? Mm -hmm. Because you can do that with the desktop side. Mm -hmm. You can say, just install them all automatically, or you can say, prompt me. Mm -hmm. Why not for the Metro side? So apparently, that showed up in a alpha version of Blue. Let's see. These updates, where's the Blue? Okay, so there's uh, new start screen tile interactions. Uh, let's see, let me throw one of the videos up here. Dun yeah, dun I want to see that. Hello. Finish loading. Haven't spent enough time looking at. There we go. Oh, they're using the tablet. Yep. So I like that. So now you can swipe to see all your apps from below. Oh. Because right now what you do, you have to go down to the lower right or right click anywhere or tap anywhere outside yeah. of the start yeah. tiles. And then you can choose all apps. All It'll bring apps, up a right. bar at the bottom. So here you can swipe up and down. I kind of like that. It is going to be interesting actually getting into a tablet. Yeah, I got to play with that one at uh, AT&T, which, newsflash to you guys at AT&T, you know what? Get off your doofuses hmm. and actually keep up with those things. I could go in there and sell those things like hotcakes, but y'all yeah. just let the thing sit there. They, didn't, they even admitted that they don't mess with it at all. Well, none of them. They don't yeah. mess with any of them. <coughs> oh, really? Not yeah. even the iPads? He said we I find that horrible. He said we don't look at them. <laughs> now, I don't know if he was referring to the... I'll bet he's referring Maybe to I only the clarify. Windows 8 stuff. But uh, well, most of them were yeah, I had 23 updates ready. The the most of them are either. Look at that! You can go. You can have four tile sizes. Interesting. Four tile sizes, so you can go the normal size. You can go the smaller one, just like they added with mm -hmm. 7.8 and you know Windows Phone 7.8 oh and yeah, Windows you're Phone 8. You're demoing it there. <coughs> and you can go the double. The double size. So basically, it eats up a full big square. Wow. That's cool. That'd be cool for like your pictures or... To um, me, the way I see the value of that is exactly where I felt the Metro side needed to go all along, which is instead of being a, on a desktop, which I get so angry at those people... <coughs> Instead of being on a desktop where you have a bunch of windows open mm -hmm. because you want to see what's going on, you want to interact, right. make the live tile much more functional so yeah. it becomes a de facto window. So if all I need to know is increments, mm -hmm. then a s the smallest size tile is perfect. If I need, um, if I need 
uh, a little bit of a caption of what's going on or some other piece of detail, then the, the next up size square is fine. <coughs> if I need uh, like a wide tile that feeds me more information, uh, pictures or whatever, then that's the size. If I really want a lot of data coming from it, then give me the super big tile. And I can adjust those how I want. And it's like having the desktop. But actually, they're live without actually opening the app. I think it's more functional than the desktop. I agree. Absolutely. Because agree. if you have the desktop, you either you're using <laughs> tabs or individual windows, which doesn't give you any information until you open it or, right. or view it. The live tile actually will feed you information, which is helpful. I mean, even now with on my start screen on my, you know, I can scan over and, and look at my, my inbox. I can look right. at it. Right, uh, absolutely. My, my calendar, uh, it's it's feeding me information. <coughs> I, I have my LinkedIn, mm -hmm. it's feeding me information. Right now, I've got you know some messages I need to look at there. Now, here is an improvement in blue that I absolutely, absolutely love. Let's see if I can bring this up here. Hey there, guys. Zach here from Inbeta, and welcome back to another. Windows Zach here. Yeah. He sounds um, like Davy Jones. <laughs> start screen open on the left hand side and the desktop open on the right. In Windows 8 if you were to click on the desktop the start screen would disappear but that is not the case no more you can as you can see here I'm using okay I love that. This it dual does screen. do that which is quite annoying I'm sure they'll get rid of that soon. Oh as wow. You see here, I'm moving yeah. this window around and cool. the start screen isn't going away. That's the However, desktop. If I, do, if I yeah. tap on the button down here. So that's oh, that's uh, so he's that's doing the simul he's it's doing the uh, buggy, as emulator. Well, that's dual screen. But I think what Microsoft are trying to do here is uh, they're trying to keep the start screen open while you're working on the, the desktop, which is a see very right now. Feature. If I click on something on one is, my second uh, screen, it forces my primary screen to flip to screen. desktop mode. Uh, With so blue, it keeps it in start, and, and I'm like, that's great. Explorer. Now if the right now you have the one third, two thirds with the metro uh, screen. Mm -hmm. It's so not limited. App, you have two is that what you showing here? On both screens, Getting ready to. I've seen somebody. Tweet that. They showed uh, seven. On a desktop. Uh, so yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. The screen the seven open. Once you close it, the monitor doesn't do anything that you didn't close up on, so you easily click on it. Which that kind of takes care of the, and open and open the desktop uh, 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 of course, because uh, this is a build. So you skip ahead. I'm going to try and open four apps. Okay. I once. love this. So let's try and get. Da -da. So there's two. We open the start screen over here. Three and four. So hang on. You can, oh, uh, you can have that four is apps two gold so for me. Cool. On bigger monitors, I'm sure yeah. you can get more on there. You can pull up twelve. And you can make them any size you want. Nice. It's I do like that. The resolution possible. I'm running it at. Let's see. Wow. So mm. I'm like, there are some really, really great. So and there's tons more. If you really, if if you, if you're interested to find out the the kind of improvements that are ahead for Windows 8. Because obviously there were tons of stuff. It's like Windows Phone 8, Windows 7, Windows Phone 7 even. There were a ton of things not ready for prime time mm -hmm. when they l released it. And the same is true here. Windows 8 is about to get some magnificent improvements to its operability. And Paul Thorat, um whom of late I have found myself actually disagreeing with some of the things that he's been saying because he's... he's he he definitely is pro Microsoft, but he's he's like me. He won't give them slack when they screw up. But he's even harder on them than yeah. I would be, and because I think he misses some critical. I, I think he's missing the potential of where this is going, and he's getting hung up on the here. Okay, here's how Microsoft once again screwed up a great idea, which is true. It's like Sci-Fi Channel. They screw up every series they ever get. It starts out a great series on Showtime or whatever, or even something they started, and then they destroy it. And then it lasts maybe two seasons after they get it, and then it's gone. Speaking of which, I want you guys to know how, how dedicated I am, because tonight was the season premiere for Doctor Who, and also the series premiere for something I haven't, I haven't decided if I'm going to follow it yet, but I had to catch the first episode, is uh, Orphan Black. 
which appears to be it's another BBC <laughs> America. Uh, basically, this girl. It starts out just from the clips I've seen. This girl sees her, uh, and boy, am I going off the left yeah. channel here. <clears throat> but I'll bring it back. I promise. Uh, bring it back. Bring it around. Bring it, bring it around. around. Um, she, she, uh, is out on a railway, on a like a platform, and she sees a girl basically kill herself, and it turns out to be her. And she discovers, and she basically assumes her identity. But then realizes that she's actually one of several clones. Oh. So there's going to be this whole kind of X Files ish approach or fringe or something like that. So uh, definitely want to see if that's uh, a good series to follow. Are you uh, recording it? Yes. No. DVR. Yeah. Great, great invention. So um, so anyway, uh, he Paul Thorat just kind of really gets on their their case a lot. But I don't think he un fully gets the potential of where this is going. But what he did get, I think, what he m the point he made l in the last couple of blogs is that um, Microsoft is doubling down to point out to folks, you might as well just get used to it because Metro is where it's going. Mm -hmm. And it's the, these kind of improvements that we saw here, and this is the alpha of Blue. Right. Um, it's those kind of improvements that will be the the way that convinces people that it's okay. Well, what's interesting to me is that every <coughs> we've all most people are in, are <laughs> are involved with a computer at some level, right? And have been for a decade or two, right? At this point, we should all know by now that things begin to evolve as you go. Don't, exactly. Don't get so twisted up in the beginning of something. Right. At least engage where it's at, unless it's just a horrible thing. But see, that's the problem. I think, I think too many folks get bent in, in, in their thinking that it, this, is, this is just horrible because it's so maybe it's different than what they were used to. Yeah. Rather than saying, okay, it's going it's, it's gonna, to, they're, they're working this out. Yeah. But, you have to look at it from their perspective too, whether it's Microsoft or Apple or whoever. Right. They're having to change. They're having to present stuff in a way, in small bits, so that they're not. It's first of all, it's not overwhelming, because I'm pretty sure they have a lot of this stuff figured out. Because they're not beating you over the head with it, yeah. but because you can still always jump to the the uh, the desktop side. Yeah. You can live on the desktop side if you absolutely insist on. I don't have any <sighs> desire to do that. No, me neither. I mean, I. I see, I see, I'm seeing, the, or for me, a lot of it's an inter, the enterprise part of it makes sense to me. I mean, meaning it's usefulness right. in that area. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not a consumer. I mean, uh, not a consumer. You're not the traditional consumer uh, market. Yeah. Right. I'm not using it. I'm using it for a lot of things that a lot of other, you know, iPad users and, Right. Tablet users are, are using their technology for, but right. But I'm mostly using it for productivity. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely <laughs> right. Absolutely, it's right. it's to help me. I want it to help me. <laughs> I'm here to help you, son. I do like the entertainment value. That oh I yeah, it, but yeah, I, I mostly sure. want it to be. I want it to be holistic for me. I want my my technology to be holistic for me. I want it to be. I want. I like the entertainment aspect of it, but I also want it to be all encompassing as far as touching every part of what I'm doing. Yeah. And I want to work for me. Totally agree. Totally agree. That's, uh. that's my, and I happen to, you know, like the, the windows, the Microsoft. Ooh, what meme. was that? That was an email. Was that you? That's me. That's your, that's your sound. Yeah. What's interesting because, oh, I'm still getting, okay. I'm still getting email, although I reset my, Renamed my account. There we go. Oh, that's cool. Playing around with the uh, the windowing capability, the one third, two thirds. Which, uh, by the way, speaking of blue, um, they're going to officially um, present it, announce it uh, at Build in June. This is Microsoft Build, which is basically all the developers get together, blah blah blah. 
And it's rumored that there will be a public preview available. Really? Like they did like with they did developing. With yes. Oh. Yes. And I'm like, I am so downloading that. I am mm. so going to update my machines to that. Uh, to fully take advantage of that. And supposedly it's going to use even less memory than current Windows 8. Really? I'm like, good grief, how could you not want an operating system <coughs> that keeps getting smaller but adds capability to it? Well, they have to go, they have to do that. I mean, it, it, that makes <coughs> sense to do that. I mean, they've kind of pushed the edge of hardware. Yeah. So they're finding other ways to use what's still within our yep. our technological abilities absolutely which is amazing to me i love it it creates that kind of challenge problem that is uh, that arises from pushing the limits of something creates innovation right and that's what we're seeing and I, I think it's great oh yeah Okay, so uh, so that's exciting. So if you want to, if you guys want to find out more about what's going on and see some really good videos of the of an alpha version of Windows Blue, so if you're if you're on the fence or you're a naysayer of Windows 8, <laughs> or you even if you're a, uh, you like Windows 8, but you really know you re you're like me, you recognize there are some shortcomings. Go to winbeta.org and check out. He's got tons of videos out there. And he's just fun to listen to because he's got such a great accent. He <laughs> sounds like a wee man. He does. He's, I think he's pretty young, actually. Yeah. So, you know. Um, so, yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, it's worthwhile. So, um, the uh, Lumia 920 got a firmware update that was kind of a... Oh, really? We sort of knew it was coming, but I, w I don't think anybody was ready for it to be released. And it, among mm -hmm. other things, it, it added improvements to the camera as if it needed any more improvements. But it actually is a little bit faster. And the also... The camera or the, the, whole, camera. the whole device? Well, the camera mostly. They were kind of just tweaking uh, some aspects of the camera. So, I mean, it's just really awesome. Um, and also among the features, they added a storage management capability if you've ever if you've ever plugged in your uh, Windows 7 8 or older phone or even Windows Phone 8 you you can go into Zune or the Windows Phone app depending on the version of, uh, of uh, operating system you're using <coughs> and you can see the distribution of how your memory is used how your storage right. is used yep. on there okay. you know a video music mm -hmm. apps and other well, some folks noticed that there was an issue with some of the memory being eaten up by this other and not understanding why. And it turns out that some of that is like cached uh, pages. You know, like have your internet files, your internet cache, yeah. and stuff that you clear yeah. out on a Windows desktop. Well, that kind of stuff goes in there. Uh, when you're updating apps, uh, evidently there's uh, scratch space that's used there, but that isn't necessarily completely freed. Hmm. So what they added was a, uh, a storage check to then I'll oh. see if I can bring interesting. So see if I can bring up my camera and show this. So you got oh, your you windows went back to start screen looks like. Yeah, I went back to start screen. Okay. So uh, let me scroll up, back up. Let me scroll up to settings. So uh, you're gonna do it by watching your monitor. That's gonna be interesting. That is gonna be interesting. It's scary. <laughs> I'm there scared. we go. There we go. So, oops, back up. Don't, don't. Okay, so you scroll up and you see this thing called storage check. So you start that, and it does this cool little oh, countdown wow. thing, and it's basically calculating what your storage is doing. Interesting. Yeah. So, and then you can see, let's see if I can get a little closer. I can, yeah, see it's calculating that. You see, go out the glare. Of course, I'm not in go. focus. That's pretty clear. But it shows you a little the breakdown, and then you flip over, you pivot over to the details, and it actually shows you specific progress bars or storage bars. Interesting. For what is actually stored on there? That is a music and video, photos, email, contacts, maps. Because I've got I store Texas maps, oh. uh, ringtones, system, and then other. 
and you'll notice that you have a couple of buttons you can choose. One's details and one's clear. Uh, so okay. you can actually clear the temporary files. That's what area. I was going to ask. Does it give you the capability? Because I've got oh, I've got 1.8 gigabytes of stuff that's in the temporary files. Wow. So it's like just hitting the internet or something, or yeah. So I could clear. I could choose clear, and it would get me that 1.8 gigabytes is back. It, really? Is there so any, any other place you can do that? Or is that the only? Is it only because of this? It's only because of this update. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to yeah. do anything with it. So that. this is firmware unique to the 920. Uh, as far as I know, this has not been pushed out yet to any other Windows phone of any type. So did it? Not even the 820, the Lumia 820. Did it come through the regular <coughs> update? Fashion? Yeah, of course. You know, and that's that's one of the the definite benefits of a Windows Phone 8 is all of your updates are over the air. Really? Yep, 100 percent. So no syncing. No syncing. Oh, no. Like the only thing it like does that. is it requires you to be at, uh, in a Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, which so, I mean, most of the time. I oh yeah, like absolutely. Um, so uh, if there is any of all the Windows Phone OEMs, clearly Nokia is bar none the best in supporting them. So while I like the looks of, for instance, the, uh, the HTC 8X, mm -hmm. um, and it's definitely lighter and thinner and all that good stuff, the phone is better on the Windows on the Lumia 920 is better than any other phone camera part i'm just i have not seen an the matter of fact why don't we just do that uh coincidentally let's take a look yes let's take a look coincidentally the brand new not even actually released yet but only announced uh, samsung galaxy s4 oh, yeah uh has some impressive specs it is as far as hardware concerned overall it is top dog if you're just a what they call uh, speeds and feeds kind of person, <coughs> you know it's got the it's got expandable memory via micro SD card and it's got eight core or actually in the United States it's got four cores, um, which it doesn't even use <laughs> all four. But you know it's great specs and everything. But people who have gotten the uh, review version are already saying, well, it's you. Bump it up against the Lumia 920, and the 920 just moves smoother. Then you know it's still a little s sticky mm -hmm. on the SG4 and or the Galaxy S4, and the camera is just not there. And so I happen to have somebody who got a review version, uh, did a shootout <laughs> with the camera. Especially in low oh, okay. light, and on the left oh, you see, see you see the Lumia 920 mm -hmm. picture, and on the right you see the Galaxy S4. Wow. Well, I saw you demo on that with my own eyes. Oh yeah, night shots. Oh, no flash. <laughs> it was like incredible. You almost, I mean, you had to strain to see what you were taking the picture of. Mm -hmm. But then when you take the picture with the the Lumia 920. It's as if there were more lights on the, yeah, on the subject, exactly. Without making it look, you know, uh, without a lot of the artifacts. Mm -hmm. It's just very sharp. You see, here on the left is the Galaxy S4, and on the right is the the. Uh, well, I will soon S4. be experiencing. Yes, you myself. will. That's right. <laughs> you're you're upgrading all of your folks yes. to that. Uh, some good friends of mine just uh, just moved from a uh, uh, a iPhone 4S to the. Courtney. Yes, yeah. To the 920. Loves the camera. Uh, her younger brother is getting ready to do that. Just, it's, it's an awesome phone. And for something that's been out less than a year, but is considered uh, old now yeah. by today's standards, mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, by the way, we gauge stuff now, um, that it's still holding its own yep. is impressive. And, you know, it just makes me more anxious to see what Nokia is going to come up with next. I mean, the, the rumors are the next version, the next Lumia, is going to have the full-blown PureView 808 camera in it, which means it's going to be wow. stellar. If you've ever seen any of the pictures from an 808 camera, it's just short of a pro camera. Where does, it, where does that lie in the megapixel world? Um, It's... Four, like 41 megapixel or something like what? that. Yeah. In a, in a phone? Yeah. But, but if you look at it, you see why. Because the 
actual lens on that thing, the the hardware makes it kind of bulbous. That's is the it, problem. Is it a uh, is it have an optical <coughs> zoom? Yes. Wow. Yeah, but it's the way it the way its sensors work. It's got much better sensors and everything, and it has the optical st uh, the optical uh, stabilization, the physical actual physical stabilization, and that's that is why the 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 yeah. That's why the 920 does such a good job with the night shots, especially, and even the video shots. If you've seen any of the video uh, shots taken with it, it's so stable mm -hmm. because it actually, the hardware in it is actually on these micro springs that keep it from, so your shaking affects the, the picture much less. It's just impressive. That's cool. And they're able to put that in there. <coughs> in in, in, in it, the camera. My and, you micro and it remains intact even with all of the... Bump, I have dropped this everything. thing so many times. Really? Oh my gosh, yes. And I have I it's virtually indestructible. No what's, damage what's to the screen. No. Nice. What's funny is uh Paul Thorat bought an 8X, an HTC 8X because he's really liked the looks of it, liked this thinner and everything cuz he had a 900. And uh of course every, a lot of people were like, "Why would you get with an HTC 8X? It's not this and that." And it's and it's and it is a great phone. Uh, it's just I think the 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 mm -hmm. nine, Lumia 920 beats it out on a number of important levels for me. But he finally got a reviewer's you know months later he finally got a reviewer's version. He did a review on it. And he was like, yeah, I don't as much mind the weight of it uh, is w basically what he said as I thought I would of the what. Of the 920. The 920. His okay. thing was he was used to that. He knew how heavy the 900 was. And he thought, well, this is bigger. It's going to be heavier. And I don't know if I'll be able to get used to it. But he was like, this thing survives. It'll survive the the zombie apocalypse, you uh, know. You'll honestly, be able to take a picture of all those zombies. The, <laughs> <laughs> the, the weight is of no consequence. It really me. isn't. Especially when you know you, f you feel like you have something that's going to survive the kind of abuse you know he made a point he said i dropped it from a level that would absolutely decimate an iphone 5 <laughs> he <laughs> said the iphone 5 would be in micro pieces well i <laughs> you know with, with my first my first windows phone windows 7 the, yeah. the microsoft focus i mean the samsung focus um was i i, I like the phone but it 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 was hard it was light yeah which was I guess desirable. For, sli for slipping in like your shirt pocket was yeah. fine. But now that, I mean, I've passed it on to some, some to my mother-in-law yeah. and, and <coughs> to my daughter. And when I pick it up, I'm like. You feel like you have a toy. Yeah, if they don't, because one uses a cover, uh, uh, a fairly substantial case, case mm -hmm. and the other one has no case. Yeah. So when I'm handling the one without the case, I'm, I'm, I feel like, okay. I you have to treat it with kid careful. gloves. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> I, I, as I, as I progress further into my likes and dislikes of my technology, uh -huh. I do like the idea that all the buttons are on one side. Oh, yeah. Yes. Not So I don't inadvertently hit something. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one thing about the Samsung Focus that was, of course, that's old news now. But right. The buttons were very sensitive. You touch them, bam, you're, you're off. You know, you're, you turn your phone off. Or you something. know, I never thought to look to see if <coughs> the, uh, the, S, the SGS4... Um, where the buttons are on that? Let me see. Ah, spell Samsung right. That would be helpful, huh? Here we go. <laughs> Galaxy S4. Let's see if there's a picture. You see where T-Mobile is eliminating all their contracts. Yes, it's interesting the way they're setting that up. Um. Although the way you can do it, you could still avoid buying the phone outright. You basically just sign a separate loan to break up the cost of the phone over payments. But if you do something that like cancels your contract or you know, you stop service with, with Verizon, wanna switch to AT and T or whatever mm. or T Mobile. Uh, and switch to Verizon or some other company, you still are paying on the... Because it's a separate thing, separate contract. Oh. You're still paying for the phone. Okay. You it's still own the money for the it's phone. It's just a service. Yep. Ah, interesting. Unless you come in with your own phone, of course. 
Okay, I'm not seeing any. I can't tell. It looks like. They don't have like a spec shot of it. Yeah, well, or? no. Probably have to go to their website. Oh, they're taking the case. That thing on. looks huge. What it size is. is that? It's. Uh, I think that's like a five. Is it five? Inch? Yeah, five point five point four. Gah. <laughs> oh no, the screen is five. Okay. But the device is five point okay. four by two point seven. Yeah, it fits right in between the GS3 and the Galaxy Note. <coughs> this is four point seven, isn't it? I think or four point yeah. three, something like that. Oh, four point three. Yeah, I, I think, think so. you're right. Well, you know what? Maybe, yeah. But, I, and I just barely, I've got small hands, so I just barely fit around this thing. I, you know, reaching across, so yeah. uh, the five would be pushing it for me. But that seems to be now the sweet spot. But it looks like a button on one side. I don't see the other button. Where's Is there a volume rocker on this thing? Can't tell. Let me switch to screen range in here. Yeah, it looks like is that two buttons? Looks like two buttons on that side. I can't tell. That's interesting. Yeah, and of course it's got a 1080 screen resolution. Is that the Galaxy 4 S4? Yep. And by the way, it's not an eight-core chip in the United States. It's a four-core chip in the United States. The eight-core is overseas. Why is that? Uh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Probably somebody's written on that. I don't much care because it can't really use all those cores. Eight-core. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not actually using all those. And in fact, if I read correctly, it's like two four-core configurations because four of the cores are at one uh, speed like 1.4 1.5 gigahertz and the other four are at 1.1 1 .1 or 1 1.2 something like that so they can't even actually operate fully together anyway because it'd be at totally different speeds but yeah it's got buttons on either side oh there you go looks like your volumes on the <coughs> on the left yeah, see, I'd be fumbling that way too many times, which is exactly what happened on the Focus. <laughs> yeah, power buttons on I would the right. be squeezing the one side exactly. to grab the, the volume controls, and I accidentally turn off the darn thing. It's Hated a, that. It's, a, it's an attractive <coughs> device. It's an attractive man. <laughs> <laughs> I am an Italian, Italian man. man. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, funny, funny, funny. <laughs> anyway. So, anyway. So that's what, uh, so, and yet more updates coming. That was so, Lu again, Lumia is just standing, no Nokia is just standing out as being easily, as a matter of fact, people have complained that HTC has done virtually nothing to update their, really? their line. Yeah. Well, that stinks. Meanwhile, I've been getting stuff, new apps, new features left and right on the 920. I'm just loving it. Are you go, oh, you, oh, you moved oh. your mouse over. Uh, a YouTube video Who's and it went live. To me? It's you. You're talking to you. So okay. So okay. on to uh, actual scuba news. Yeah. <laughs> um, evidently there is a new campaign starting down basically in the Caribbean called "Take a Lionfish to Lunch and Eat It." Yes. Uh, mm. There is a problem. Right, Anybody who's let do a dramatic question. It, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anybody who has been diving in the Caribbean uh, is quite familiar with the beautiful yet deadly lionfish. Lionfish. Yes. They are gorgeous. Let me see if I can bring bring that up. Just as yeah. long as it is not a flying paper fish. Yes. <laughs> I love that that routine. <laughs> it's so great. Uh, here we go. See if I can play the video. Bring it over here to the screen region. Play the video. Hi, I'm Lindsay Japal, Miss Cayman Islands. Hi. As beautiful as our islands and reefs are, 
We have they a problem are. throughout the Caribbean that affects us all. Lionfish have invaded us. This ferocious hmm. species is destroying our native fish life. And they really are. Systems. Wow. Since lionfish have no natural predators in this region. Oops, and of course my speed is eaten alive. Well, I'll take this pause to explain a little bit. Um, lionfish basically got interested in the inter introduced in the Caribbean because of hurricanes in Florida. Wow. <coughs> that destroyed <coughs> some Spearing and hunting um, are essential to preserving aquariums, life in beautiful you know, like SeaWorld type. Mm -hmm. And they like this water, but they weren't indigenous to this water. And they exploded because, as she said, Miss Cayman Islands said that <laughs> uh, they have no natural predators. And so they literally, they're voracious eaters and voracious breeders. Thomas here at Michael's Genuine has the perfect solution. So now what He's they've done is they've encouraged people to go spear fishing for them as much as possible. Just, um, and now there's a big thing that basically you can eat them. Yeah. They're poisonous. They yes, but like blowfish and other right. things, you can prepare so them and eat them. Venomous spines come off. It is a completely safe fish. It's very similar. Well, to let me back that up because that's important. Dice. It's important to note. Important to note. It's safe fish. It's very similar uh, to flounder. Back up. Similar to flounder. Which yeah. are the ones that are the venomous ones? But once these venom venomous spines come off, it is a completely safe fish. It's very similar to flounder. Nice. We're gonna dice them. Every everything in this dish is just. Balancing itself. So basically, so he's doing a, a ceviche. Fragrant. Yeah, sushi. Okay. Sushi, sushi dish. Mm. A little fatty uh, papaya and a little mixture of scallion and cilantro. And a little bit of juice. Mm. That's it. So, this is my favorite part. Now it's time for the tasting. <laughs> Chef Thomas whipped up quite a ceviche here for me, and I can't wait to dig in. And then she freezes and keels over. Take a lionfish to lunch and eat it. <laughs> okay. I'll let the credits roll so that I give them due credit for this wonderful video. So, so yeah, the I guess we're gonna see a bigger push now for uh, eating lionfish. Well, if they can create a kind of a cottage uh, industry. For something like that, you know, I can imagine going to, and I have to admit, I would try it. Mm -hmm. uh, I can imagine going to, you know, doing like a trip down to the Gulf Coast, doing a South Pottery or whatever. <coughs> and if they served uh, some sort of a line fish, I, I'm not into sushi, so ceviche would not be attractive to me. But if it was something, you know, like a blackened, mm -hmm. I would try like a blackened lion fish. Just to see what it's like, and I might like it. If, if, it, if it wasn't very fishy, I would eat it. Well, if it's like flounder, it won't be. Yeah. See, that's why, you know, I, I kind of stayed away for fi from f eating fish for a long time till I tried mahi-mahi, and it's not a very fishy fish, but I love it. It's got a very good taste, a very good texture mm -hmm. to it. And so I do like mahi-mahi. So if this is something that's along those lines, I'll be like, yeah. That's, you know, last week we were talking about different things you can do to help protect your favorite dive sites and one of those was to uh, research the restaurants and places that you get seafood from uh, or eat seafood at to see if they use uh, eco-friendly you know like back in you remember when they started back in the day the the dolphin safe tuna yeah um, something along those lines where where maybe uh, fisheries or whatever they they focus more on uh, farm bred fish mm -hmm. rather than going out like you see on the deadliest catch stuff like that right. uh, and basically strip mining the the, mm -hmm. the the ocean for fish but um, this is something that needs to be right controlled and if they could create if they do this right they could create a really good industry of uh, of um, you know, a lionfish cottage industry, and I would, I would, you know, if I, if I, if I taste it and said it, decide, you know, I like this, I'd be fully supporting that. Is, so it, be cr cool. is it creating a? Uh, obviously, I, well, I don't, has it created a problem with people being because uh, of the numbers of fish being? Not as much as you think, because any dive operation where they're going to take you in places where you're going to see tons of those, mm. 
they're briefing you. The, the part of that whole process is the dive master or the captain will sit will sit with everybody when they get to the site and say, okay, here's what you're going to see at the site. And, and a lot of times they'll have like charts right. up that they hold for uh, what fish are out there, and they'll show you. Uh, no, what I mean in general, I mean how do they? How is it causing a problem to the? Equal? Because it, they are literally eating all the other fish. They're, so they're. Okay. So yeah, they're voracious fish. eaters, and they have a very voracious appetite. Appetite, and they're voracious. So they're how, they're not that huge. That the, well, they I we've seen them. Tara and I have seen them. You know, anywhere from you know smaller size to we've seen them like really this big. So they're you know, and when you get to their spines, they can be this big. Wow. Yeah, I didn't realize they were that those, big. Yeah, they're they're big good size. So they eat everything. So they're they're chomping okay. up on the, okay. all the smaller fish all right. a lot. So it's not necessarily a a, <laughs> a problem with people being damaged directly like not so much stepping on one or yeah. whatever yeah okay yeah it's just totally that it's destroying the chain the food yeah. chain okay <coughs> all because of an uh, accident you know right and of course i can just imagine the environmentalists saying well see that's why we shouldn't have aquariums because you have fish that aren't supposed to be there and blah 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 yeah like you know accidents happen and this is our opportunity to have an effect. And they, they have said that the, the encouragement of people to spearfish the lionfish aggressively is working. It is helping mm -hmm. at least keep control. Mm -hmm. um, but the simple fact is they migrate around the Caribbean very easily. So um, they, you may concentrate where divers frequent but there are plenty of places where the fish will be that divers aren't so much. Yeah, true. So it's kind of like chasing cockroaches or mice. <laughs> you can maybe control an area, but you're ne not necessarily going to stop it from right. growing elsewhere. <coughs> so I think this would be a good opportunity for them to, uh, for companies to come up with really good recipes and encourage restaurants to sell, you know, to promote and sell, you know, lionfish recipes well it potentially could even create another market of fishermen oh absolutely can you imagine fishermen, yeah. you know if it's especially as plentiful as they are and easy to catch as they probably would be i mean figure their spines make it really easy to get them in a net yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh darn it i'm stuck i can't ah oh, darn it um the the potential to go to walmart or heb and right next to the tuna and uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, sardines, whatever is see lionfish at cakes. least at so least in that area. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be great. That'd be awesome. And if it really worked well, I, I can just imagine like a cans of lionfish. Cans. Like a, I'll have a I'll have a uh, lionfish salad sandwich, please. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool. So uh, last week I showed a little bit of video um, of uh, my dive that earlier that day oh, yeah. at uh at what we call the abyss which is basically the south point of scuba cove there were you with robert on that one nope so oh really yep brought my spare air and all that good stuff yeah. so i was you know had redundancies and all that good stuff um but uh and i so i i, I wanted to grab one of the other couple of the other videos and show that so i've got cool yeah yeah i, I got that. <coughs> Let me start playing this one. Bring the volume down just a bit. And we were at what, what? 53 degrees? 54? Yeah, well, it's 56 degrees. 56. Yeah. Still chilly. To where you were in 7? Yep, I was wearing 7 mil. Gloves, only wearing my 5 mil gloves and boots. Um, I didn't wear the hood. Of course, I had my bandana on. I kind of, my ears were a little cold on this, no, but it wasn't. Yeah too bad but uh, I think at some point here I do pull up my uh, computer my console but it was kind of neat because last year this dive where I, I got to a max of 78 which add 54 feet to that yeah <laughs> is that where we're down <coughs> Huh? Is that how far down we are? Yeah, it's, we're down 54 feet. I ran to uh, Jeff Larson, who is one of my one of my former students, who is now one of the advanced uh, divers on the team there at the the, the lake, the park really? service. And uh, he uh, he was telling me, he said, "Yeah, it's down 54 feet, and they're looking at letting another 12 t 
to 15 feet out. Wow. I know. Which I don't think would actually hit the <coughs> lowest it's ever been. I think really? it's been lower than that. Really? I think I hard to believe. You know, no, I take that back because that would put it 60, 69. Yeah, that would be the, the record. I think the lowest it's been is 60. <coughs> Visibility was, depending on where I was at, was it maxed out at about 15 feet, so it wasn't too bad. Hard to tell with the camera here, but but I was looking to see caves, you know, looking for little caves that I yeah. hadn't been able to see before. So yeah, because this is at a depth that you couldn't have made it to before. Right. So where are you at here? What's the depth you're? Uh, I think I pull. I think I was at about seventy-three feet right here. Still fairly clear. Pretty, yeah, I was. Good light. Yeah, I was looking for catfish. I yeah. I hardly saw any fish at all on this dive. And that's. I mean, it definitely didn't show up on camera, but just like in my peripheral, yeah. you would catch them. I I saw maybe three fish the whole time, and I was expecting something there to see in these caves. I was expecting to see catfish. Yeah. There's usually some pretty good ones down there. Uh, oh, yeah. Pretty good size. Significant size. Right. There Here we, we go. go. Yay. 73. Yep. I cruised along here, and, I, and then I dropped even further. Because uh, yeah, it ask. was just, you kept looking. That's why we called the abyss, because, like, this might be one of the deeper shore accessible uh, areas that we've seen because the cove itself when the lake was back up only got to about 100 feet because we at least right where the buoys are mm -hmm. so we would go out there that's where I took any of my advanced students to for their uh, for their deep dive and we would hit a max of 100 feet there and it was basically leveled out moon service at that point. Some sort of stream there you passed by. Or yeah, I, I'm sure that that was uh, somebody had a, a fishing line and then they cut it loose. Because there's no... Uh, you see trash even there. There's no buoys out uh -uh. Where, where, where that's not located. See, it drops in. I was like, okay, wow. I gotta see down even for there. It's cool. <coughs> It was such a peaceful dive because there weren't very many, even though it was a nice day out. It was a little windy uh, on the surface, but not too many boats out, so. This was last weekend. Yep. Now, the the full suit you have, is it a five or a seven? I don't think it's seven. It's probably a five. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I need to wait a little bit longer for I. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I was in my seven, and I I did get chilly at the end there. It may even be a three full. I don't recall. Uh, I don't think it would be I've a three. I haven't worn it yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's right. I haven't had to. See, I'm always on the hunt for a cave to see if there's something I can see in those. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, I would have liked to have been there on that one. Yeah, no kidding. Trying to peer inside there. I was like... See, the lake is so low now. I want to find somebody with a boat and go out to Buoy 19 and drop on... Uh, on Good Enough Spring to see if I can get some pictures, video of the opening of that. Because it's probably within limits now. Not being a tech diver. <laughs> it's kind of tough working a light and camera and I have, I'm towing my marker buoy. Oh my gosh. Me. <laughs> you have to be very calm, very yeah. relaxed, and very yeah. methodical in your processes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now this has, this is the same camera you've had, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, we still want to get, as a matter of fact, I think when we get our tax return, we'll probably go ahead and get that really nice. I'm anxious to get that thing. I want to take some really great HD video. This, I don't remember, I've used this one, but I don't, I don't remember, does it have the the view screen on it? Or yes. Have, yeah, okay. Yeah. So here I am at towards the end of the dive. Get that Obviously in a shower. Oh yeah, you can see, see, see the light difference. Yeah, you can tell. More lights filtering through, and so you see a little bit more of the color. Yeah. Which there isn't a lot of color to begin with. But right, because the lake having yeah, silt, you know, stuff in it. <coughs> but again, at this depth, I was expecting to see some fish. Yeah, and where do you where are you at here? Uh, I had just finished 30? my fifteen foot. Three minute stop at oh, 15 okay. feet. So I was cruising along at about basically about 10 feet right here, looking for anything, <laughs> poking around. What was the uh, the trek like from your? <laughs> you mean carrying from all the this trailer stuff down, down to the edge of the water? It wasn't as bad here as Scuba Cove I itself, been, yeah. but it's still it was still a walk. <coughs> and I basically wore my gear down and wore my gear up. Yeah, wow. I did have to make two trips because I also had my dive bag and mm -hmm. some other stuff. But because so much of the rock is loose. As you get closer to the shore there, um, you have to be careful. If you're carrying that much weight, mm -hmm. it starts to kind of move around. Oh, yeah. You t take a step and everything falls, yeah. moves from underneath you, and you're like, I'm going down. Yeah. <laughs> one, one benefit of diving this time of year is, as you said, there's not that many people out there. Right. right. There certainly aren't any swimmers. Here we hey. go. I'm making my surface. Can I go to the top? Yay! There it is. And I survived yet another dive. With my patriotic bandana. Yes. Dive with your nose. Long old walk. Wow. <laughs> Look at it. Long old walk. Wow. So, yeah, I had a blast. Um, yeah, Robert wasn't able to go because he was watching the kiddos. And and you don't have a five mil no. <laughs> suit, so you would have been just a tad I would have been fracing. Yes, it would have been cold. So, uh, yeah, I had a great time. I just, I love any chance to dive. And I try to get at least one dive every every month if I possibly can. Of course, we're going to start warming up more. Mm -hmm. And so the water temperature is going to start increasing. So, so I had a good time. Cool. Well, uh, I got a call from uh, Landon Boston, uh, whose son I certified. Mm -hmm. And he wants eventually his daughter to get certified. Um he found out, I guess he saw a flyer or something for a uh, for a citywide cleanup, and he had called and, and, and left a message to find out if I knew anything about it. And uh, I hadn't seen anything. I hadn't seen the fly flyer, so uh, I was kind of busy yesterday, so I didn't get to call him back. So I, when we got back to the house, I called him and said, hey, so what's up? He said, well, I saw this flyer, but I don't have it with me. There was about a citywide cli cleanup. And I said, well, do you happen to recall when? He said, well, I, it may have been this weekend. I said, well, that's a weird time to have a, a citywide cleanup on Easter weekend. I don't. I, was like, I, see, I saw something about it, too. I don't think so. <coughs> I want to say, let me find a calendar. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, well, see if you can find see if you can find that flyer. I said, don't go out of your way to do it. But if you can find it, and if it's within the next week or two, let me know. Give me a call. We'll promote it on the Facebook and, and on the show and we'll try and send the word out because there are a number of us that would like to um, no, when you say to, to do that. Citywide cleanup meaning what? Well, kind of like when uh, the previous mayor used to do it. He and his wife, Bibi, they were very much into that and so they really spearheaded that. And, you know, the current mayor just doesn't do squat with any of that. But um, the we would sign up mm -hmm. but we would go to the creek Okay, yeah. And because a lot of stuff gets thrown in, it all right. collects towards Tardy Dam. We would go there and just basically cruise up and down. We pull all sorts of stuff. But there was also cleanup going on everywhere. Uh, uh, yeah, I've, you I've know, I've people would like teams would say, okay, well, we're going to take one we of us to park. We did that one year. Gonna, yeah, yeah. 
So um, we'd yeah. like to get the dive. We'd like to get the, the the dive club. You know, get local divers together to go out to San Felipe Creek and clean up along there. You yeah. know, we can bring bring family members who don't dive or are not able to dive at that time. They can be our shore support so as we bring stuff to the shore they can take it and throw it in the dumpsters or they can clean up along the the shore but we have a great time you know i bring the trailer so we mm -hmm. can you know, free air, air fills and for those who don't have their own gear you know i can at least let them use some of the gear mm -hmm. if it'll fit them and that kind of stuff so um i definitely want to participate the beauty of doing stuff at lake Amos or lake Amazon at uh, San Felipe is that temperature is 76. Constant. It's like Balmeray. It's constant. <clears throat> so, you know, you can go in a three mil shorty mm. or certainly a five mil full and be very comfortable, spend a lot of time in the water. Yeah, I definitely want to do that. Yeah. If you get, when you get info. Yeah. Need the info. Put yeah. me on the list. Yes. So, uh, more to come on that.